Hello and welcome to our kitchen today here in our home in Brittany in Northwest France. Today on our midweek money chat we're going to talk about how to retire on a shoestring budget. I want to put this one out here straight away first of all before anybody starts thinking like hang on a minute so let's do this one not everybody wants to retire some people want to carry on working for the rest of their life and that is absolutely cool if that's their thing if that's your thing superb i'm all for people doing exactly what makes them happy however if you want to retire here's a big one is to know your reason why and here's how to work out your reason why is to ask this question what will you be able to do when you are retired that you can't do now so let's have a look at that now as i'm talking about a shoestring budget all the things i'm going to talk about are things that are not money dependent so let's have a look at these things that you can do that you could maybe couldn't do when you were working a lot of hours. Well, the first thing that you'll be certainly be able to do is you'll be able to spend more time looking after yourself, more time spending time eating when you want and what you want. You'll be able to spend more time on mindfulness, on relaxing, more time on exercising. So those are just a starting point. You have to excuse me, I've got notes and a script here in front of me. More time on hobbies, clubs, those things that you might want to play badminton, go to the sports centre, all of those things that you maybe didn't have time to do before. All of those things that we know are so essential for our well-being, especially as we age, are being active in the community and volunteering. Volunteering is a wonderful thing to do, costs you nothing. And there's loads of things. Maybe you've always wanted to work at the donkey sanctuary and groom the donkeys or walk the dogs at the rescue centre. Maybe you've always wanted to do something as a conservation volunteer or help in the community or volunteer in your library or get in that mini bus and help people in your community. Lots of communities in the UK have a community mini bus to take people around. Maybe you want to help with that. But think about your why. What is it that you want to do when you were retired that you couldn't do when you were working? Now, another thing I want to mention about retiring on a shoestring budget is you do not have to go from full-time work to no work. You can ease yourself into retirement. You can take the semi-retired route. Mike and I are very much semi-retired. So I have lists. So bear with, you can work part time. You could go to your employers and discuss with them working part time. If there's a restructure at work, that might be a great opportunity, maybe to take a redundancy payment or to restructure your hours and not work so many days. You may just completely change your job. You may have a job that just is really consuming of your soul and your energy and you might want a job that is less demanding. You may want to change jobs to something that is hobby related. I can think of like, think of jobs that I would love to do, like working in a garden centre, working in maybe retail, working in the entertainment sector. Where we lived previously in Plymouth, there was some really good ad hoc work to do in a concert venue and in the local theatre where you could just work when there was a show or a performance on. And it was great. We saw lots of older members of the community working there. What a great way to be part of a community theatre and earn a little bit of money doing it. There's also things that you can do with semi-retired, those ad hoc jobs that wouldn't suit a person who needed a full-time income. Seasonal work, and especially, I know from the UK, seasonal work in tourism, in hospitality and the delivery sector as well. There's more deliveries towards Christmas. There's more food deliveries at certain times of the year. So 
Summing that up, you can ease yourself into retirement. You can change to a less strenuous job or work less hours or just go part-time in the job you're currently doing. Now, let's discuss the things that will cost you more and the things that will cost you less when you are retired on a shoestring budget. Let's go things that will cost you more. And this could be a shock to some people. When you are at work, as we were, 10 hours a day, five days a week, the lights weren't on, the fridge wasn't opening and closing, the toilet wasn't flushing, the taps weren't running, it cost actually less in utilities. When you're at home all day, and we found this because being semi-retired and working from home, you use more of everything. The lights are on more, we use more firewood, we've got more heating that we need with our firewood, we, we use more water. So that is something to bear in mind. It will cost you more in utilities, but it'll balance you out with the next thing that we will discuss with things that will cost you less. Now let's go through, because I think there's a whole heap of positives that really do help if you are retired on a shoestring budget. Now, the things that will cost you less. And I've got a big list here, a big list here. Household items will cost you less because you've probably bought them all any, anyway and you don't need any more. You're happy with the stuff that you've got and they are going to cost you less. And if you do want to or you do need to get something replaced, you can look for that cheaper, on offer or second hand or scout your way through Facebook Marketplace. A massive saving that we have found being retired or in our case semi-retired, is we really spend very little money on clothing. We don't need those work clothes because nobody's looking at us thinking about what we're wearing. It's great. We don't have to be laundering our clothes or pressing our clothes or taking our clothes to the dry cleaners. We don't have that kind of attire anymore. That saves us lots of money. Now the next part of being retired on a shoestring budget where you can save big when you're retired com in comparison to when you were working are on cars and transport. Absolutely a biggest, biggest saving. You may only need one car. You may as a couple be doing more things together and absolutely only need one car. One set of tyres, one set of repairs, one lot of insurance. Also, Mike and I used to drive 10,000 miles a year commuting. So your car itself will not depreciate in value so quickly because you won't be putting the miles on it. Now, the next part of transport is wherever you go, whether it's, whether it's I'm looking at my notes here, is really important, trains, planes or buses, you can travel off season and off peak and all of those are cheaper. Let's talk housing. By the time you've reached retirement age, you'll have paid off your mortgage. You've worked hard for that. It'll be all gone. So the biggest chunk of money that you had to earn, you won't need anymore. Now there's other parts of housing that you really can save money on. And I'm going to use our UK example. When Mike and I downsized in the UK from a four bedroom house to a two bedroom house, we moved from a council tax E to B and reduced our council tax just by doing that by £1,000 a year. But don't forget as well, if you do downsize, the house insurance will be less. Your running costs will be less, your utilities will be less, your council tax will be less, and if you've downsized, and if you've paid off your mortgage, you free up a lump of capital. The biggest area I feel where you can save money and retire on a shoestring budget is food. You've got more time, to cook at home, more time to make a picnic to take out, more time to make yourself a coffee to take with you on days out, 
more time to batch cook, more time to shop around for the better prices of food, more time to go blackberry picking or getting the crab apples off the trees in the, in the autumn and making your own apple and bramble jelly, for example. More time to go fishing. More time, who knows where you live, to grow your own vegetables or keep your own chickens. So food is a huge, I think next to housing, it's one of our biggest bills. And you really do, with time, have the time to save money on food. And I think that on just on that section, there was a big lot of advantages that you can live on a shoestring budget because there's a lot of savings you can make when you're retired. We all know at some stage our working lives will slow down and we come to an end of it and we will, if we choose to, retire. And all of that requires planning. So the next part is answering the question, what do you need to do or have in place in readiness to retire? You can imagine what I'm going to say, because I'm probably here preaching to the choir. So let's go through things that you really need to have in place before you even consider or even start your planning for retirement. First and foremost is get yourself debt free. It's absolutely, you can't retire with debts. It would be really, really, very, very, very difficult. Secondly, you've got to have in place your emergency savings funds. So you've got to build up your savings funds. My advice to everybody is always to have at least six months living expenses that could cover all of your bills and everything that you need just to survive for six months. Another part of it, which is absolutely essential, and like I said, I'm probably preaching to the choir here, is get yourself on a written budget. I promise you, you'll find out that you can live on a small amount, but it's important to get yourself on that written budget. Now is one of the most important things that you need to do before you even consider retiring is to pay, overpay your mortgage, pay it down as best you can or as quickly as you can, or wait until you've actually paid it off before you start considering retirement. One thing that you need to be doing alongside of that is practice living on a smaller budget. So once you're paying off your mortgage, that overpayment will leave you naturally living on a smaller budget. But once you've practiced that year after year after year, when you actually get to living on a smaller budget, you'll have practiced it. It will be reflex. You will have that muscle memory of how to do it. It won't be a shock to the system and it won't feel like a hardship because it has been something you've practiced and chosen to do for many years before you do actually retire. Let's get to the nuts and bolts, the really important one, and it's money. Can't live off fresh air, you've got to have it. In the UK, it's checking that you have made 33 years of national insurance contributions. Remember this, if you pay more than 33 years, you won't get more pension. You get 33 years, that's it. The second part of it, have you paid into your employer's, contrib your employer's pension? So for example, I have a teacher's pension, Mike had a local government officer's pension. We were paying in, and we've looked at the number here, we were paying in 650 pounds between us each month towards our pensions in all the years that we were working. So have you paid in? And working out then, and you can go on and you can get estimates of how much you will have each month to live off. So make sure you've paid in and it equates to enough to live on each month. So, big important part of those preparations for retiring, even if it is on a shoestring budget, is timing. 
If you do not have a pension plan in place, that timing might be working until you are 67. It might be before then, it might be at 60, it might even be at 55. You know, looking into that, but the important part of that is knowing your when and your timings. So let's sum this up. It takes good preparation and it takes good practice. And I genuinely believe if you've nurtured and practiced and secured good thrifty habits that you're a saver, not a spender, if you are a thoughtful purchaser and not an impulse purchaser, if you're happy with what you have and you don't want to keep upgrading or replacing, you kind of got the skills already to be retired on a shoestring budget. Now, a shoestring budget means different things to different people. To us, it means we have enough. We have enough to live, we have enough to eat, we're never cold, we're never hungry, and we're always happy. We've got enough. Well, I hope you enjoyed that midweek money chat of how to retire on a shoestring budget. So thank you so much. It's been lovely having you here in my little kitchen here in Brittany. If you enjoyed it, go on, give it a like. It's really helping us get the channel out there. We love it when you comment, we always answer. You may have a question about retirement, but go on, leave a comment, we love it. And last of all, don't forget to subscribe because you don't want to miss more of this. And I'll see you next time.